What's up, boxing fans? This is TBE Boxing back at you again. Today's topic Undisputed Shocker. Jamel Charlo versus Brian Castano ends in draw. Full post fight reaction. Let's chop it up and see what it's all about. On a block with the pole, huh? Dead lucky for riches, huh? Dead lucky for riches, huh? Pretty rich on me titties, huh? And I got the glazy run up on me. I'ma make you get it. I'ma make you get it. Okay, boxing fans. Uh, great night of boxing last night. Uh, we saw a great fight between uh, Brian Castano and Jamel Charlo. And uh, I think that we could say, uh, generally speaking, that the fight was a good fight and it probably ended unexpectedly to a lot of people. Uh, as you all know, if you watch the fight, it ended in a draw. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the draw, uh, you know, whether or not the draw was actually, you know, something that was fair but uh at any rate it was a good fight now uh let's let's start from the top okay there's several things that we're gonna take away these are a couple of takeaways from this fight uh you know and uh, uh a couple of these takeaways are a big takeaways okay number one uh castano uh put up a damn good fight okay uh charlo put up a great fight as well oh okay but i think that at this point you know uh after watching uh castano for several fights now i think that we can say that he's an underrated fighter i, I think you know see what happens when we have these type of fights you know like say undisputed you know not just undisputed, but you know, just championship fights and you know, and, and and elite fights because we had two elite fighters tonight fighting um, or last night. Uh, what happens is that you know, uh, we get to see these fighters, you know, uh, push to the limit, and you know, we get to see the best, you know, fight the best. And uh, last night, you know, was a uh, we saw the best fighting the best. Okay, we didn't we didn't see a blowout, we didn't see a, a you know a one sided fight, we didn't see a knockout, you know, uh, we saw a tough fight that went back and forth, and it showed both uh, the talents of both guys, it showed you know their limitations, uh, it showed their skill okay it showed their toughness you know uh it displayed uh you know uh a lot of their strengths and weaknesses okay uh it was a great fight okay uh great fight uh unexpectedly of course you know uh castano uh got the better fight you know i thought okay and uh you know uh if we're going to go by a, a, a point system, I mean, it was a close fight. Uh, you know, uh, one of the ref, one of the judges, I mean, you know, uh, clearly, I mean, there are things to be said for both guys, right? Okay, I mean, you know, we can look at it like this. Uh, we can say, you know, I thought Castano won the fight. A lot of people are going to say that he got robbed, okay? And that may be the case. Now, but let's look at the other side. Let's play devil's advocate. Uh, Charlo has three belts. Castano has one belt. Did Castano do enough to the point where Charlo should lose his three belts? I mean, some people will say, well, hey, it doesn't matter if it's one belt, three belts, or four belts. 
a win is a win and you know a loss is a loss okay uh me personally i'm not you know gonna cry about the draw simply because you know uh obviously there was an attempt to rob castano and maybe it's it, it, it partially succeeded okay uh so that 17 that 117 to uh 111 uh, uh judge i think his name is nelson vasquez or something like that that obviously was an attempt to rob uh to pad you know to to make put put an advantage for uh charlo that, that was clearly the situation because if this fight went i went to the you know you know well it did go to the you know go to the cards but i mean uh in a normal situation where you know uh if, uh, if the fight wasn't that close uh charlo would have uh, won the fight if the other two judges you know if the other two judges didn't you know do their job you know i you know, i mean it, it's it's weird to see that 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 i mean such a blatant display i mean how in the hell could you score the fight 117 111 in favor of charlo even if you thought he won the fight okay charlo didn't score it that charlo thought the fight was much closer than that and he was in the fight so you know these type of things you know uh you know and i'm glad charlo said what he said because you can't let this type of thing go by because this type of thing is bad for boxing but i don't want to dwell too much on the judging but i mean it's hard not to you know when you see a a, a, a judge score something like that uh i mean it's ridiculous but anyway so let's get back to the fight so like i said you saw we saw on display tonight you know the skills and you know of both these guys and what 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 we can say about this fight uh, one thing you know one big takeaway from this fight is that uh you know brian castano is a lot more skilled than we give him credit for uh he's a great fighter uh elite fighter uh a very skilled fighter and when we look at the fight you know very closely uh, the closer we look the more you realize how skilled he really is because when we look and we look at the advantages and the disadvantages you know in the disadvantages column uh he has a lot of disadvantages in that fight i mean we're talking about he's five seven and a half and jamal charlo is like five what, 11 something like that okay uh you know that's a big difference okay uh five seven and a half uh six or uh, six feet whatever however tall jamel, jamel charlo is uh the hand you know the the reach 67 i think uh yeah castano is six seven and a half and uh charlo uh it's like 74 something like that i mean a ridiculous you know difference in arm reach okay so uh you know charlo is physically the bigger guy okay uh, and, and supposedly the stronger guy as well okay so so when we look at the fight you know at, at first look at on the surface um uh, you know uh it, 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 this fight was supposed to be an uphill fight for uh Brian Castano and uh you know uh he conceivably you know pulled off the upset now I, I you know maybe the draw is for whatever reason I don't know maybe it's for the you know for for uh Las Vegas uh you know because you know the, the, the house they lost a lot of money because uh, Charlo is clearly the favorite but anyway the bottom line is that Brian Castano put a lot better fight than a lot of people expect, expected him to, and he showed a lot of skills in that ring. You know, uh, uh, he's got a good ring IQ in there. Uh, you know, I mean, he know what he's doing in there, and with the disadvantages that he has in terms of arm reach, size, and height, you know, to be able to pull off what he did last night just showed you, you know uh you know how skilled he really is and now let's let, let's be clear about one thing though i'm not taking anything away from jamal Char uh, jamel i keep I, I 
keep saying Jamal. I mean, Jamel Charlie, you know, I'm not taking anything away from Jamel Charlie because uh, a lot of people will say, well, hey, you know, uh, maybe Charlie is not as good as we think he is. But I, I don't think so. Okay. I, I think, I, I, I think the opposite, actually. I think Charlo is as good as we think he is. He's very good. He's an excellent fighter. He's a top fighter, elite fighter. One of the best fighters probably ever in the junior middleweight division. Okay. Uh, you know, so let's not go there. Okay. Charlo is great. He's a great fighter. Okay. But it's just that uh, Castano is a great fighter as well and a lot better than you know we thought that he was and he showed that you know in this fight okay so i'm not taking nothing away from you know i i thought you know charlo you know uh did a good performance except for the fact that you know he didn't use the jab as much as he he, he should but the, the re, but the next takeaway we're going to get to is that the reason why he didn't use the jab as much as we thought he should have okay and that's not because that's not because he didn't want to use the jab it's just because of what castano was doing okay because the biggest factor i think in this fight you know besides the general takeaway that castano is a lot better than we thought he was the biggest factor i thought in this fight you know it, it was speed okay castano was a lot faster than jamal charles respected you know and you know it's a funny thing too you know because uh, before the fight, I was looking at the fight. You know, I was you know looking at the, uh, the you know the, the the press conference, and uh, I saw Jamal, I saw Jamel Charlo talking, and then I was saying to myself, man, you know, Jamel Charlo looks really, uh, you know, he looks really confident, and he looks, you know, comfortable with himself. He looks like he's supposed to look, you know. Uh, uh, it looked like he actually rose to the level of the, you know, of the occasion in terms of the undisputed fight that was coming up. Because this is a big fight, and it looks to me like, you know, he he kind of matured into his role, you know, and, and he seemed comfortable and confident, and you know, he he was talking like that, you know, and I was like, yeah, it looks great, you know. Uh, I even thought so when he was walking into the ring. But when you now when you looked at Castano. You know, I, I looked at Castano and I thought to myself, I said, to myself, I, what I was thinking when I look, at, I was looking at Castano, I was wondering, well, I wonder if he came, you know, or uh, here in time uh, to uh, get ready for the fight. I don't know if he was in Argentina, or if he had was staying in uh, the U.S. Uh, you know, but you know, he seemed pretty comfortable and he looked like, uh, you know, but he seemed kind of, you know, laissez-faire, like carefree type of vibe, you know. And I was looking at him and, you know, I, I saw Charlie looking at him as well. And, you know, and I thought to myself, well, damn, you know, uh, this guy, uh, you know, because uh, Daniel seemed kind of care, you know, he seemed kind of easy, you know. But uh, in the fight, you know, like in, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that Castano looked kind of laid back, okay. But in the fight, he, he was anything but laid back. He was very calculated and he was very quick on the trigger, especially with that right hand. And that right hand kept landing. Okay. Now, if Castano had a little bit more power, uh, you know, uh, Charlie would have been in a lot of trouble last night. But it just so happens he doesn't. And so he, his punches did hurt Charlo, but he didn't land enough of the punches in, you know, to be able to sustain. Uh, the momentum at any given point okay to be able to overwhelm charlo because charlo was able to get out if you know he might land one or two punches in a row sometimes maybe three on a rare occasion but uh you know charlo not after that charlo was gone or uh, charlo you know slipped a lot of punches charlo is very good defensively and so even some of the punches that land probably didn't land solid as they could have because Charlie was quick, his reflex was very quick. And even when a punch is landing, he could kind of shift away. And he did that a lot. And a lot of those punches would have landed, uh, you know, a, a few of those punches did land solidly, like, you know, punches where he probably wasn't, didn't see the punch coming. But not many of the punches that landed, 
Charlo didn't see coming. He was able to see a lot of these punches coming and was able to kind of, you know, prepare himself for it. But the punches, you know, they might not have landed silently, but some of them, but they did land, and a lot of them landed. So, uh, so I think speed was the biggest factor in this fight, uh, in terms of, you know, the unexpected, uh, as from you know Charlo's point of view. I didn't think he expected Castano to be as quick as Castano was, and that kind of messed up a lot of things for Charlo because, you know, he didn't want to throw the, I, I guess he didn't want to throw the jab as much because Castano kept coming over the top. And land in the right hand, you know, and so uh, you know, so that made Charlo kind of hesitant to let the jab go, okay, and uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, again, I think even I think even uh, Charlo was surprised at the skill level and the toughness of uh, uh, Castano, especially when Castano got hurt in the tenth round. You know, you you think that you know Charlo did his best to try and take him out. But, you know, uh, again, we saw that uh, how, you know, responsibly, uh, how responsible uh, Castano is defensively. Even though he's a come forward pressure fighter, he does it with, you know, he does it responsibly. Okay. And he does it calculated. He's a very calculated. And he, he's not just rushing in there and just throwing punches. Okay. He's doing it with, you know, a lot of uh, technique and feints and different things like that. He's, a, he's very skilled at at the way he fights. And so, uh, you know, uh, just to look at him, you might get the wrong impression. But uh, even when he was hurt, Castano was able to evade, uh, you know, uh, the, you know uh, the knockout punch from uh, Charlo because he just kept moving away and, you know, uh, knowing that he couldn't just st stay in there you know and then he would just throw out never you know throw a punch or, or, or two so the referee would probably wouldn't start the fight if the referee thought was thinking about that and uh yeah he he, he, he basically evaded charlo to you know because i i even thought to myself during the fight because uh you know i was saying to myself when he hurt when he got hurt it was like a minute and seven seconds left in the fight and i was saying to myself probably a minute and 10 seconds i said to myself wow you know there's a lot of time left in the fight charlo's probably gonna finish him and uh, and you think that Char and normally charlo probably would have finished a, 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 another fighter but to be able to evade uh charlo for so long for over a minute shows you how you know while he was hurt shows you how skilled castano is because Char charlo you know is an executioner and believe believe you me uh he was he was going after that knockout when he had uh castano hurt he was trying to finish him but castano was able to survive again which showed his you know again showed his, his skill level so it was a, a a great fight uh but again you know uh castano you know I, I thought probably pulled it off and uh you know again i thought that you know a lot of people gonna again gonna talk about Charlo, you know, because uh, we heard, you know, J Derek James tell him to use the jab more. But like I told you, why he didn't use the jab more because of the speed of, of uh, Castano, and you know, uh, I, I thought Jamel Charlo fought a great fight, actually. Okay, uh, you know, uh, the, the only thing I would say, you know. Uh, Besides the fact that he didn't throw the jab as much, which I already know why he didn't throw the jab, I, you know, but I, I, the, the problem was, you know, him trying to throw the jab and moving forward, but he should have thrown the jab going backward or, or moving away. And I, so, so my, to me, I think the jab would have been more effective if he was doing the jab, you know, fighting on the back foot as opposed to trying to sometimes move forward, which he did sometimes. Okay. Uh, I thought that he should have done more movement. Okay, uh, instead of trying to walk down uh, Castano, especially early in the fight, maybe later in the fight he could have walked him down, but not earlier. That wouldn't have worked because that's what Castano would have wanted because Castano kept trying to get on the inside and close the distance. Okay, that's what Castano wanted. I, I, I think Castano was hoping that uh, Charlo would have tried to walk him down more to close the distance between them. So he couldn't, you know, he didn't have to work as hard trying to close the distance. 
But a lot of times, uh, Castano had a, a, a big problem trying to get an inside because, again, Charlo uh, would move, especially after a round where he got touched by Castano. The next round, he'd come out and he'd, he'd move. And he did do a lot of movement in the fight. My, for me, the problem with, you know, with, with Charlo was in that he was doing, he was moving or he wasn't going after Castano. To me, he wasn't doing enough movement. To me, Charlo should have been moving more. He should have let let Castano come to him, and he should have just move, you know, jab and jab. You know, I think the jab would have been more effective that way. And what if he was on the move? I think, to me personally, I think Charlo fight better on the back foot. No matter what people say, a lot of people say he can. I don't. I don't buy that. I've seen him fight. Uh, you know. When I say back for that being defensive, being more defensive fighter as opposed to a more offensive, you know, all this talk about his power and this and that, you know, uh, I wouldn't, you know, if I was him, I wouldn't feed into all that and, and, and thinking that, you know, I can just go and knock everybody out. Like I thought that he, you know, he thought coming to the fight because he said, he kept saying, you know, if we, if you watch the post fight conference that, hey, well, you know, normally I just knock guys out. Yeah, no, normally you don't knock guys out and don't get into that mindset that, Oh, you a knockout puncher or whatever, you know, uh, just be, try to be the best boxer you can be. Because to me, as a boxer, Jamel Charlo is much better than as a puncher. Okay? He's a, he's a, to me, he's a superior boxer. Especially when he combines that with movement. You know, I, 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 don't, I, think, I don't think there's many people that can beat him if he was to... Stick to that style, more the Mayweather style. He's more suited for the Mayweather style of boxing. Okay, he got you know. Uh, I, I think that that's the style that he should use. More movement. You know, he has the power, and you know when the knockout comes, let it come. Don't go looking for it. You know, as if you're some kind of knockout artist. That's not what you are. You know, you're a great boxer, and you should stick to boxing. So you know. Uh, Basically, uh, that's what I thought about that fight. You know, I thought it was a great fight. Both guys put on great performances. I thought Charlo, you know, did a lot of good movement. And, you know, uh, when he did move, I just thought he should have moved more. Okay. And, you know, and kept the fight on the outside as opposed to letting Castano get on the inside. To me, I would have kept that fight totally on the outside if I was Charlo. The whole fight, I would have kept, I would have been moving, dancing, as much as I, I would have been, you know, he should have fought Eric Landis' star, Laura style. He got touched a lot by Castano when he didn't need to get touched because he was languishing against the ropes, you know, and, and, and different things like, instead of moving. I understand why he was doing that. Uh, I mean, it's not like he, he's not in condition. He, he should just move more and use the jab more. And, you know, that fight would have been much easier. You know, and he would have won the fight. But as we saw, you know, he, he got a draw. But... I'm not taking anything away from him still. He did he did put on a great performance, you know, uh, especially when he got touched up by Castano a couple of times. Yeah, he recovered quickly and was able to get out of there all at, at, at every turn, you know. Uh so uh so he, you know, uh, it wasn't his best performance, I don't think. But uh it's hard to be at your best against a guy who's as good as Castano and who's bringing the pressure. Uh, but we do we did see that he was good enough to to the point where Castano wasn't able to apply the amount of pressure that he would have liked because uh, uh, Charlo kept him at bay, okay, with his movement when he did move, and you know uh, with his left right combination and but some some good body shots as well. So uh, it was hard for uh, Castano to get an inside because he had to go he had to get past a lot of firepower. To get to get on the inside okay. so uh he was not you know he, he wasn't able to uh generate as much output at he would as he would have liked that i'm talking about castano now so you know uh you know the 1100 punches per fight out output and he puts out he wasn't able to do that uh last night but he did get in enough uh and did land enough on the inside to where you know uh he, he, I thought he probably won the fight. Now, again, I'm not, you know, totally unhappy with the draw, but I just thought that Castano won, but I, I could accept the draw. Because uh, a lot of rounds could have been disputed, 
you know, uh, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, we're talking about undisputed and and, and two belts, you know, four belts on the line. So we have to be a hundred percent correct, and you know. But again, when we look at the fight, you know, to be honest and to be fair, we have to say that the judge that that ruled uh, one seventeen one eleven. You know, uh, uh, that that just that, that just wasn't right, and you know, uh, when you when all that, when everything is said and done, uh, you know that was an attempt to basically uh, steal the fight. As far as I'm I'm concerned, I'm not saying that you know who, you know, but this judge obviously had a you know this judge obviously had some type of agenda. Uh, and you know, uh, that that was clear in that type of judgment because nobody could have been that blind. I don't care who you are, uh, a baby. I could have picked anybody off the street, put them in there in that fight, and say, Judge this fight tonight, and they would have done a better job than that judge. So, I don't understand what this judge, you know, where this judge, you know, learned to be a judge or how he, you know, uh, what his criteria is. I mean, it's just you know, unexplainable as far as I'm concerned. But that being said, again, the fight was a great fight. I enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll have to see a rematch. I'd like to see what both, you know, both of these guys, how they're going to adjust the rematch. Uh, I don't know. I'm thinking that now that Charlo has kind of seen, been in there and seen what uh, Brian Cassano have, uh, I think in the rematch, he probably put on a better performance and he probably, be, you know, being able to analyze this fight, I think that, uh, in the rematch, uh, the advantage would probably go to Charlo. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Castano won in a rematch, you know, uh, either. So uh, that, which means that, you know, we need to see the rematch, okay? That usually, they, well, when you don't know who might win the next fight, then you know uh the rematch needs to happen so hopefully that rematch is you know happens and happens soon uh you know but uh it was a great fight uh castano put on a great performance i thought he won the fight a lot of people thought he won thought he got robbed that mattered the draw but still you know uh it is what it is uh hopefully like i said we'll see a rematch soon and uh you know uh we can see you know get to see who is who would be undisputed at 154 pounds but at this time neither guy was able to pull it off and so uh we still have to revisit that at some point in the future uh now we don't know if anything is going to come in between that i mean obviously we've heard rumors of uh terence crawford talking about uh going up to uh 154 maybe he might want to challenge castano and then he'll be in line for the undisputed against uh, Charlo, or he might want to stay at 147 and you know get the winner of the Manny Pacquiao, Terence Crawford fight if Terence Crawford decides to fight him. Which I, I mean, with, if uh, if uh, Errol Spence decides to fight him, which I kind of doubt, but uh, you know based on the history of you know these two uh, of Spence and uh, Crawford so far. So, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, we, uh, Charlo has three belts, so that means a lot of mandatory is involved. So, we might not be able, we might not even see a, a, a fight next from these two guys, uh, even though that would be, you know, probably be the best thing. But we're probably not going to see that. And we'll probably see these, both of them fight other people before they fight again, uh, if they ever fight again, actually. You know they could both could lose in their next fight you know not not likely but it, it's possible and uh you know so we could not end up not seeing this fight so it's probably the best if they can just go ahead and get this fight off you know out the way first before they do anything else but we don't know if, if you know if it's going to play out like that based on like i said the different uh sanctioning bodies and the requirements and the mandatory and whatever else that might be out there so it is what it is so we'll have to wait and see how everything all plays out but again this is tbe boxing and let you know that uh make sure you like and subscribe to the channel okay uh go to tbeboxing.com 
get the latest news, headlines, and commentary on boxing. Okay, get some merchandise. Okay, uh, sub come back to YouTube and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Okay, like and subscribe. Okay, so uh, that's all I have for right now. This is TBE Boxing. See you on the next one. I'm out.